uh, Senator Reed of Rhode Island is recognized. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I first want to begin by commending Chairman Brown and Ranking Member Scott for drafting and uh, bringing to the floor the Fentanyl, Fentanyl Act. Uh, there were 60 of us that supported it, and as chairman of the Senate Armed Services Committee, I tried my best to get it included on the National Defense Authorization Act. Unfortunately, as I believe Senator Scott indicated, Republicans in the House objected to it, and we, we have to get it done. I uh, would ask, beginning with Mr. DeFord and the rest of the panel, to just comment on why you think this uh, legislation is so critical and how, how it would be helpful. I think, first of all, I think that this piece of legislation is extremely helpful because it's stopping the core of the supply. It's stopping the supply chain and doing everything we can to put a, put a kink in that. But equally, I think any bill that is bringing attention to what I, I think the, the, the most brilliant thing set up here today is when my friend next to me said that, what does it take to make it a crisis? Are we going to wait until it's half a million people a year? Because I tell you what, we are really close. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Yost? Sir, I think, uh, I mean, the end result is, is obviously we're seeing what's happening. There's no question. It's, it's here in front of us. Um, and, and no matter, of, you know, every, every minute we, we take to, to discuss and argue about what's the proper path to go, we're losing lives and we're losing this war. Uh, and the reality is, is we, we, we truly need to, to, to pull together and recognize that this, this transcends uh, political parties and political beliefs. Now, uh, from the perspective of uh, the police on the street, uh, you, you see that dimension. Uh, but there's another possible dimension that China's interest is, is not just to make money, but really to undermine our social fabric in their competition with us. Do you get a sense from the... I, I, look, I, you know, my view is a little different. Uh, you know, I guess we look at a, a global r a perspective here. Right. Uh, you know, mine's, you know, our, our members are, are more focused on, on how it's affecting our communities. Right. But let's, let's just be honest. There's no way in the world that China doesn't know the damage they're doing in, in, that's being done in this country. So you're either complaining, you're either, you're either fixing a problem or you're part of the problem. So uh, their knowledge of, of the damage that's done and not taking any action is, in fact, their action. Thank you very much. And uh, Mr. Urban, please. Yes, sir. So, so, so the act itself allows for more offensive sanctions and, and an AML compliance. Now it will benefit law enforcement as it targets the money laundering networks, too. Mm -hmm. It takes forfeited uh, Mexican cartel property, Chinese money laundering property, and puts it back into law enforcement investigative operations. There, additional funding is needed for opportunities, investigative opportunities that exist right now in terms of taking that data in and networking that data and pushing target packages out to, ident to identify the networks and, and, and engage them. And it would help uh, the coordination between federal authorities and local authorities in terms of targeting fentanyl, right? Absolutely. We want to map the network. It takes a network to defeat this network, right? So th these are networked, organized crime activities where you need communication, transportation, and financial transactions for it to for it to work efficiently, and it is working efficiently, unfortunately. And you need to attack all three components to that. And uh, Mr. Yos, again, from the perspective of the street officer, uh, you could, I think, concur that you know they might not know where all the information is coming from, but they need the information. No doubt, no question. Information is key. Right. Well, thank you all very much. Uh, this is a critical problem in my home state of Rhode Island. I think. We lost, unfortunately, uh, 434 Rhode Islanders. And for the smallest state in the country, that's a lot of people. Thank you.